So yeah, logistics. So we're going to do a talk on scaling open, scaling Postgres on platforms like OpenShift, and we're going to go into details on um, Postgres operator. People will probably find interesting. So who is Crunchy Data? Crunchy Data is a company that is Postgres um, consulting services and several Postgres committers work for Crunchy. We do open source Postgres. Uh, it's all open source. And we also do containerization of Postgres. And we'll talk a lot about the containerization side here, but we're, we're basically an enterprise Postgres support company. We also have a booth here. Uh, it's right behind the Red Hat booth over there, 603, I think is the number. So if I don't cover something uh, in detail, stop by the booth and I will spend uh, a lot more time talking about containerization and the Postgres operator. So if you're trying to do a Postgres as a service, some of the things uh, you'd want to look at is containers in general provide a sandbox around something like Postgres. So it makes it easier to install, implement, and administer like large numbers of Postgres in a cloud environment. Uh, some of our customers do this on-premise, on some in public clouds. So we've seen all kinds of different combinations, hybrids between the two as well. So some people will run, say, a Postgres replica on-prem or off-prem, but the, maybe the primary runs some other cloud or something. So lots of different combinations, um, but we try to provide tools that let you do your own Postgres as a service. Okay, so why would you do this? We want to lower the cost of provisioning Postgres. So the containerization helps a lot with that and some of the tooling around it. So like Postgres operator, for instance, uh, makes the cost of provisioning really cheap. Uh, we also want to provision Postgres in a way where you have a very good control of compliance of how your Postgres is set up from a security point of view. Um, also, we support different kinds of authentication, and it helps you basically control where, where and how your Postgres is being deployed. It's all open source, too. These projects, there's two of them, uh, Container Suite, open source, and also the Postgres operators open source as well. Um, some of the things that make up this Postgres as a service a set of containers called Crunchy Container Suite. There's about 12 to 14 Postgres-related containers in that suite, uh, from running the database to managing it, uh, doing monitoring and statistics collection and things like that. Um, we support OpenShift as a primary deployment platform, so everything we're talking about runs on OpenShift. Um, the Postgres operator runs on OpenShift as of 3.7. So a set of building blocks is um, this container suite, and it runs the Postgres database, open source database, lets you do backups in a variety of different ways. We support right today three versions of backup utilities for Postgres, um, large-scale backups as well using PG Backrest. So like our Postgres container includes PG Backrest for incremental backup. It includes things like PG Audit for um, government or DOD requirements for uh, database auditing. And then we do things like um, metrics collection of Postgres and we let you uh, scrape those metrics with Prometheus. And again, there's a GitHub link there at the bottom. If you want to go find more details about it, documentation and a suite of examples, you can just download that from and try it out. Images are provided out on Docker Hub. Those are CentOS based images, so everything's free for you just to try. Some of the terms for containerization that come to play whenever you're deploying a database is clearly pods and services and deployments. Um, but most importantly is management of persistent volumes. So a, a database container like ours has multiple volumes that you can attach. So just the data itself is its own volume but things like configuration files, um, archive logs, um, backups, all of those are volumes, represented volumes that get mounted into the container. 
So uh, managing the sets of large numbers of Postgres with large numbers of volumes um, is a management task. Um, <clears throat> this graph simply represents, as you scale up the number of Postgres containers, or any container for this matter, you get to a point where managing all of those becomes kind of a burden on the human side. So the Postgres operator tries to solve handling large-scale numbers of deployments and decreasing that burden. So that's why we did the Postgres operator in the first place, is people started deploying hundreds of Postgres containers, and one customer in particular is deploying about 700. So when you deploy 700 database containers, something like an operator is really useful to help manage that kind of um, you know, number, sheer number of things to manage. So about 11 months ago, we started writing this Postgres operator, and its job initially was to enable easy provisioning of Postgres and also Postgres clusters, so it lets you scale up the number of Postgres replicas. It defines custom resource definitions um, that are centric to Postgres. So there's things like PG cluster, PG replica, backups. Those are all custom resource definitions that the operator supports. It's based on the Kubernetes APIs and client Go specifically. So why would you do this? On the right is a typical advanced or complicated Postgres deployment. One primary with N numbers of replicas with PVCs and claims and volumes and services. Everything on the right is basically automated by the Postgres operator from a deployment perspective. But um, the management side is really where you get a lot of value from an operator because it knows about the bill of materials on the right. It can uh, let you interact with bill of materials um, type of uh, concepts to a Postgres cluster as opposed to you having to individually manage small number of pieces of resources on your own or keep track of those. So the operator applies metadata across everything on the right from a logical point of view, you view it all as just a Postgres cluster. We're gonna show you a, just a real quick can demo of, the, the operator has a client um, interface today, and that client is nothing but a REST client that talks to the operator's REST API. So when you're interacting with it as a, as a human, you're interacting with a REST API. It's first command, PGO create cluster, RS1. This is how you start creating Postgres clusters, essentially. There's binaries for Windows and Linux and Mac as well that we distribute. So we just created three clusters there. We're gonna apply some metadata labels. So if you're trying to manage hundreds of these containers, you wanna be able to categorize them in certain ways. So here we're gonna apply a metadata label of environment equals test on just two of those and you're gonna be able to search and query just based on those metadata labels. So imagine hundreds of these deployed with several kinds of different categoriz categorization schemes. You're able to view kind of your assets that you've deployed. So using this PGO client means that you can you know, examine what you actually have deployed out there from a Postgres set of assets. That command there shows you the kind of the flexibility we've built into the operator. It's really geared towards complex deployments of Postgres. That particular command lets you place replicas on completely different storage classes on the primary. It also lets you uh, specify resource configurations for different pieces of your Postgres cluster. And it's also targeting certain kinds of nodes for the primary. So it uses Kubernetes node affinity to specifically let you place, if you want to, uh, where your primary Postgres is gonna be. And then there's logic baked into the operator that places uh, node affinity rules that um, place the replicas on nodes that are not where your primary is running, essentially. So it gives you a form of HA. That's the configuration file uh, on the server for the operator that defines all of those configurations, both for resources and for storage classes. You can have any number of storage classes you want, and you can do things like backup to specific storage classes as well. 
So if you wanted your backups to physically be placed on storage classes, like in another data center, you can do that. That last command just shows you how to view a cluster, gives you information that's useful, and then it basically a simple test that shows the status of the cluster. PGODF is just showing you the data capacity utilization of your Postgres on a volume basis so that you know how much of my PV I'm actually using with Postgres data. And this last command shows kind of overall um, operator status. It's all command line driven today. Um, working on a web app to front this is one of our roadmap features that we're working on. That command there just shows you kind of overall how many databases I'm running and what versions of databases I'm running. So if you're a DBA and you have hundreds of these things deployed, it'll tell you what specific Postgres versions you're running and how many of them are running. I think this is the one that pauses, yeah. So just another demo. Just going to show a little bit different characteristic. You'll see at the bottom there those labels. Those are just user-defined labels. You can attach any kind of metadata to these you want, and then you can query on uh, those metadata just using any other kind of Kubernetes selector filters. Another thing while this demo is running is uh, this is controlled with an RBAC uh, mechanism, so you can define different kinds of roles for operator end users. Uh, you can define read-only roles or admin or users, so you can precisely define you know which features of the operator specific users want to use. Just uses basic auth and a, a simple RBAC uh, mechanism. There you'll see one with multiple ser uh, multiple pods that we've scaled up. You just run PGO scale and it creates, causes it to create a new replica that's attached to that cluster. From a debugging point of view, whenever we print out information about a cluster, um, if you have access to cube control or OC, it gives you the ability just to do further diagnostics by printing out that information. So roadmap, um, people have seemed like they've really liked this project, and we have some really large people testing this out and trying it out. So some things that we're working on, kind of phase two of this, is to handle advanced backup management. So if I'm creating thousands of backups, what do I do in terms of scaling the management of those backups? That's a problem we're looking at solving. Also, thick and thin uh, cloning of databases using different kinds of storage uh, technologies. Rapid data ingest is one where <clears throat> if we can apply operator um, scaling towards rapid processing of thousands of input files, that's something that we think is interesting to look at. A graphical user interface, people would love to see that as opposed to this uh, beautiful command line tool. Um, and then advanced security. We think we can do things um, from a security point of view in terms of applying SQL security policies across large numbers of Postgres, we think we can do that with uh, the operator. Actually, it's already built in when, in terms of a version, initial version of that. You can actually create and apply SQL policy across n numbers of Postgres clusters with one command. So uh, if you have any interest in this topic at all, check us out at the booth 630. You get a hippo. Uh, you can talk to us, ask us any kind of questions you want about Crunchy, Postgres, the operator, things you can do with this. Uh, these projects are both open source as well, so they're very accessible for you just to go download and try out and play. Uh, we sell support, professional ser services and support around these, and we also do training for customers on it um, for enterprises needing support, and that's our business model. But um, real exciting projects. We think uh, the operator technology <clears throat> really is, is the way to go in terms of advanced automation. 
And especially if you have hundreds and hundreds of containers to manage, we think that's where the sweet spot is. So things like dev, test, QA, if you've got lots of databases that you need to provision and manage, um, things like the Postgres operator, we think are where uh, you can solve that problem. And there's our contact information. Uh, feel free to email us or ping us. And uh, we love talking about this stuff and working on it. And also we can talk more in detail about big roadmaps for, for what we're going to do down the road with the operator. And thank you very much.